Hi everyone and welcome back to a new episode of BWD. Today we're gonna code a simple program to order our pizza. We're gonna be able to choose between different flavors and order more than one. When we are done, we're gonna get the receipt. If you are new to this channel or you're back watching this video, do not forget you can find timestamps in the description below. And all the code that you're gonna see in this episode is available on GitHub. Just look for the project repo, link in the description below. And now, without further ado, let's get started. Before jumping straight into coding, let's go to the board to make sure that we really understand how the program is gonna work. First off, we have to display the menu. And in the next step, we're gonna get the order itself. This can be split down in multiple tasks. First, we're gonna ask for the pizza. And if that is available, we're gonna ask how many they want. After that, we're gonna ask if they want anything else. And we're gonna repeat this over and over till the customer say they are fine. Finally, as a last step, we're gonna display the total. Great, and now let's write down an example. First, we're gonna see the menu displayed. Here we have pizza one for $7, then pizza two, $8.50. Right after, we're gonna ask for the pizza. And let's say the customer wants pizza one. This one is available, so we're gonna ask for how many they want. And let's say two. Next, we're gonna ask if they want anything else. And we're gonna repeat this all over and over till they say no. Finally, we're gonna display the total. However, sometimes the customer would like to have a pizza that we don't have available. In that case, we're gonna display a message like, sorry, we don't have that, and right after ask if they want anything else. Great, hopefully we are on the same page. And now let's code this. For now, let's forget about step number one and go straight to step number two instead. Let's start by defining the order variable. Here, we're gonna store the name of the pizza that our customer will like. However, for now, let's hard code this so we can move faster. Later on, we're gonna use the input function to get this value from the customer. The next step is to check if the pizza is available or not. There are multiple ways of doing this, and they depend on the data structures that we use in the program. A first approach will be to define two variables. We can define the flavors variable, which is gonna hold all the pizzas that are available, and then the prices variable, which is gonna hold all the prices. As you can see, they are both lists, and the idea here is that the position is gonna be the link between the flavor and the price. For example, here, the cheese pizza is the first element. Its price is gonna be the first element of the prices list, in this case, $7. Pretty easy, right? Okay, now we can check if the pizza is available or not. First, let's define the index variable i. This is gonna be equal to zero because in Python, the position of the first element of any list is zero and not one. I know that this might be confusing, but it's just the way it works. So let's say that you wanna have the 10th element of a list, then its position is not gonna be 10, but rather nine. Again, this is because the first element of any list is not element one, but element zero. And this implies that all the other elements' position are gonna be shifted by one. So element number two is gonna have one as index, and the third element is gonna have two as index. I hope this is clear. If not, let me know in the comment section below. Next, let's define the variable order underscore i equal to none. I'm not gonna explain again what none is, but if you don't know it, just check episode number one of this series. Now, let's write down a for loop over the flavors. Again, if you don't know what a for loop is, just check episode the number two of this series. In every iteration, we're gonna check if the flavor is actually equal to the pizza chosen by the customer. And if that is the case, we're gonna save the value stored in the index variable into the order underscore i variable. Finally, we're gonna increment by one the value of the index. And now when the loop is over, we can just check the value found in the order underscore i variable. If that is none, it means that the pizza is not available. Otherwise, we're gonna have the index of the pizza chosen by the customer. And from here, getting the price is really easy because we know that the price of the pizza is gonna have the same index of the flavor. Okay, let's try it out if this works or not. Great, we got exactly what we wanted. The cheese pizza is the first element of the flavors. This implies that its index is gonna be zero, and that is exactly what we got it. Its price is gonna be the first element of the prices variable, and here we got exactly that, $7. Let me open now a Python interactive shell 
so I can show you an alternative data structure, which can help us to simplify very much our code. Let's define the menu variable as a dictionary. A dictionary is the data structure used to store two elements that must be linked together. In the Python syntax, the first element is called key and the second one value. And this is really handy, for example, in our case, where we want to define a link between the flavor of the pizza and its price. The syntax is pretty easy. First, we have to define the key, which is usually either a string or a number. Next, we have to write down the value, which can be anything we want. However, we have to separate key and value with a semicolon. If we want to add more than one key value pair, we can simply do that adding a comma after each pair. For example, in our case, the first pair is the cheese pizza. So we're gonna have cheese as key and $7 as value. The big advantage of using dictionary as a data structure is that we can get the price of the pizza by just specifying the name of the pizza. We can do that using the get method. But what is exactly a method? So this is something new that we haven't seen in the previous episodes. So it's out of the scope of this video to go into details of this. However, you can think that any data structure in Python comes with a toolbox and all the tools available are called methods. So they are pretty much like function, the only thing is that they are bounded to the data structures. This implies that every time you define a variable, this will have a set of methods, which you can use whenever you want pretty much. And methods are thought and used to get done basic operations. For example, in this case, if we want to have the value associated to a key, we have just to specify the key itself. And to do that, we're gonna use the get method. Pretty easy, right? So let's give it a try another time. Let's look for a flavor that is not available in the menu and save the value into the pizza variable. So what would you expect to find in the pizza variable? A simple idea might be, well, the ham flavor is not available, so probably we won't find anything there. And that is right. If I check if the pizza variable is equal to none, we're gonna get through. So if you got lost here, you probably don't have a clear understanding of what none is in Python. But luckily, you can discover more about it in episode number one of this series. Okay, great. Now let's rewrite from scratch our program using the dictionary data structure instead of two lists. Let me open a window now to check if we get the same result. All right, this implementation works fine. So what's the point of all of this? Well, I think it's pretty clear that the implementation on the right using the dictionary requires only one line to check if the pizza is available and get the price. In the first implementation instead, we need way more. And this is a very big deal because it reduces very much the complexity of the program that we are coding. It is such a big deal that even Elon tweeted about it. However, don't do the mistakes of thinking that reducing the number of lines is always good. As Guido said it, your code is gonna be read not only by you, but also other people. So there is no point of reducing the number of lines if you are the only person that can understand how the program works. All right, we are back to the program. As you can see, we're gonna move from here using the dictionary as our primary data structure. But there is one difference here. Notice how the menu variable is all uppercase. That's because in Python, whenever a variable is expected to be a constant, so the value doesn't change in the whole program, then its name should be all uppercase. And this is exactly our case because the menu doesn't change during the execution of the program. It's always gonna be the same, right? All right, and now let's go to step number two. As you can see, I've just written what we had seen a few seconds ago. There is one thing though that we have to fix. From episode number one, we know that whenever we use the input function, the return value is always a string. That's why when we are asking for a many pizzas, we need to convert the string into an integer. If this is not clear, just go and check episode number one of this series. And now let's check if this works or not. Okay, great, everything seems to work. But now let's try with a pizza not available in our menu. Okay, the code broke, but however, we got exactly what we wanted. The expected message is correctly displayed, and then the code breaks because n is not defined for this case. But that doesn't matter because we are just using it for debugging purposes. Let's go back to our program and move ahead now. Next, we're gonna display the anything else message. However, right now, this message is useless because even if the customer says yes, the previous actions won't be repeated. We know that to repeat a set of actions multiple times, we need a cycle. And in our case, the while cycle is what we need. Let's define the checkout variable and assign the false value. 
The idea here is that if the checkout variable is equal to true, then we have to quit the cycle. Otherwise, we're gonna keep asking for pizzas. And of course, after each iteration, the checkout variable needs to be updated. To do so, let's drop the print statement and use the input function instead. We're gonna save the output in the checkout variable right after checking if the answer is equal to no. And now let's give it a try. Okay, great, everything seems to work. Let's give it another try though. As you can see here, I typed in no, but with the capital N, and the program didn't quit, but rather asked me for the next pizza. Luckily for us, solving this is really easy. Let's open a Python shell to understand how. Exactly like for dictionaries, also strings have methods. There are many available, but here we need the lower method. As you can see, any character in the string which is uppercase is gonna be converted to lowercase. As you can see, methods are really handy and there are many more. For example, if we wanted to do the opposite, we would just use the upper method. Okay, and now let's code this. To consider this step down, there is one thing left to do though. Right now, at each iteration, both the pizza and the end variable are erased. And in this way, we are not able to keep track of the whole order. What we can do is to use the dictionary to keep track of all the pizzas chosen by the customer. So let's define a new variable called order, which is gonna hold a new dictionary. The keys are gonna be the flavors of the pizza and the value are gonna be the quantities. Here, the initialization of this variable is split over two steps. First, we're gonna create an empty dictionary, which you can get with just curly braces and assign it to the order variable. Second, we're gonna populate the dictionary. So we're gonna do a for loop over the menu variable. And remember that when you are iterating over a dictionary, you're gonna get the keys out of it. At each iteration, we're gonna use that key to populate the order dictionary with zero as initial value. And finally, in the while cycle, let's update the quantity every time the customer orders a pizza. And now let's give it a try. Let's order one cheese and two ham pizzas. As you can see, the final values in the order dictionary are exactly what we expected. The cheese key has one as value, the ham key has two, and all the others have zero. Okay, and now before considering this done, there are two things that we have to fix. Let's start by solving a baguette we have in the order dictionary. Right now, if the customer chooses multiple times the same pizza, only the last order will be kept in the order variable. Let's make an example. Let's say that you want one cheese pizza, but after a few minutes, you're gonna go with other two more. In the order variable, we're gonna find only two cheese pizza. That's because every time a pizza is chosen, the previous value is erased. Instead, what we have to do is to update the previous value, and we can do it just by adding a plus before the equal sign. Next, let's reduce the amount of code needed to initialize and populate the order variable. This can be reduced to a one-liner defined the for loop within the curly braces. This syntax is called dictionary comprehension, and as you can see, is really handy. Let's give it a final go now. Great, everything works. And now we are finally able to code step number one. To display the menu, the idea is the following. Let's define the message variable where we're gonna store everything that must be displayed. Let's start by defining the header. Each line is gonna be separated by the previous one using the new line character. If you are unfamiliar with the new line character, just check episode number two of this series. Next, we have to add the pizzas, so we're gonna iterate over the menu variable. However, here we need both the flavor and the price. That's why we're gonna use the items method to get both. And finally, let's display the footer and a welcome message. Alrighty, we complete step number one. Let's move ahead with step number three now. This is gonna be pretty similar to the previous one. First, let's display a message to the customer, and next, let's add the receipt header. In the body, we're gonna show the total price for each pizza, and at the footer, we're gonna have the total. Let's start by defining the total variable and assign it zero. Next, let's iterate over the order variable. Here, we're gonna need both the flavor and the quantity. So we're gonna use the items method once again. Then let's calculate the total price for each pizza. Of course, this is gonna be done only when the quantity is bigger than zero. Right after, we're gonna add this to the receipt and update the total variable. Finally, let's add the footer. Okay, and now let's see if this works or not. Let's go with one cheese pizza and two ham pizzas. And this is $23 in total. Okay, we have finally come to the end of this video. If you have any question or feedback, just write it down in the comment section below. Do not forget to give it a like and subscribe to the channel to not miss next week's episode. 
In the meantime, if you want to do more, just check the GitHub repo, where you can find the next steps for this exercise. And with that said, see you in the next one. Ciao!